Hi my beauties, welcome to Younger. I'm Dr. Stephanie Kappel. I'm a board certified dermatologist and today I'm gonna to be talking about sunscreen. So before I move on, I'd ask that you like, subscribe, and comment on my page and share this video with anyone who you think might be interested in learning a little bit more about sunscreen. wanted to talk about sunscreens is because I commonly get asked what sunscreen should I use or patients sometimes bring me a bag of their sunscreens in clinic and have me evaluate their sunscreens and make my recommendations so I think it's actually pretty simple and as long as you understand a few concepts and um, we correct some misconceptions I think it would be very easy for anyone to pick a sunscreen that's right for them so when it comes to the way it smells the way it feels is it greasy is it matte is it for sport? Is it waterproof? I think that is up to you as a consumer or as a patient to decide what brand you like. And for me, I would like to explain to you what is important to look at the active ingredients in the sunscreen. So first and foremost, I think it's important to talk about the electromagnetic spectrum because I'm nerdy and sciencey like that. And I like to share that with you. And I know you guys follow and you understand when I kind of break science down for you so it's easier to interpret and it will make it easier for you to pick a sunscreen that's good for you. So when you talk about the electromagnetic spectrum and UV light, there's UVA, there's UVB, and there's UVC. UVC we're not gonna worry about because that gets filtered out by the atmosphere. We don't have to worry about that living on planet Earth. That's okay. When you talk about UVA and UVB light, you have UVA1, UVA2, and UVB. UVB rays and UV light is, is important for skin cancer. UVB rays are the ones that cause skin cancer. And UVB rays are regulated by the FDA and measured by a sun protection factor, which we call SPF. When you look at the UVA rays, those don't really cause skin cancer as much, but those cause more photoaging, fine lines, wrinkles, breakdown of collagen, breakdown of elastin, brown spots, liver spots, all that terrible stuff that happens with photoaging, that weather beaten look that we get on our skin when we're exposed to the sun for years and years, that's all UVA. So when you're talking about UVB, that's SPF, that's skin cancer. When we talk about UVA, that's photoaging, photo damage, badness. And so as a Mohs surgeon, I do Mohs micrographic surgery, I'm a skin cancer surgeon, so of course, you know, I want to protect you from the UVB rays that cause skin cancer. However, as a cosmetic dermatologist, I, it's important to protect you from the UVA rays because that's what causes photo damage. Now the problem is people get hung up on SPF. A patient will come in and say, Dr. Kappel, I have an SPF of 100. That, that may not be protecting you at all from the UVA rays. It's perfect for UVB rays and it's protecting you from skin cancer, but the UVA rays are important too because those will cause photoaging. And so an SPF, the sun protection factor, is only regulating or monitoring the UVB rays. And you can have SPF of 1,000 and you have no UVA coverage. Now sometimes you do, but you can't get hung up on the SPF because that doesn't, and that doesn't take into consideration the UVA rays, which are important for photoaging. So how do you get around that? You want to get a physical blocker. So this is why dermatologists love physical blockers including zinc oxide and titanium dioxide. Zinc oxide and titanium dioxide protect you against the whole UV spectrum, UVA1, UVA2, UVB. It has the whole spectrum covered. Versus chemical blockers, when you say avobenzone, cinemates, oxalate, all these different, if you look on the active ingredients of some sunscreens and there's like 10 different ingredients, that's because there's these little chemicals that basically piecemeal and cover like this portion of the UVA1, a little bit of the UVA2 here, some of the UVB, and they have to have all of these active ingredients together to cover the whole spectrum versus zinc oxide or titanium dioxide in and of itself blocks the whole thing. So that's why dermatologists like physical blockers, which are zinc oxide and titanium dioxide, better than the chemical blockers. Also, not only, you know, not to mention that they're more natural, zinc oxide and titanium dioxide are naturally occurring minerals, and they're physical blockers, meaning when the UV light hits the skin, it reflects the UV light off the skin, as opposed to chemical blockers, which absorb the UV light and just kind of absorb and sit on the, on the surface of the skin. You'd rather have deflecting and reflecting of those UV rays. You don't want them being absorbed on the skin. So for many reasons, this is why dermatologists like the chemical blockers better. So when looking at zinc oxide or titanium dioxide, it's important to look at the percentage. So if a sunscreen has zinc, you know, 3% or titanium dioxide, 
2.4%, that's not enough. You need 8% or higher of either one. If you have both, even better. But if you have a zinc oxide 8% or higher, that's what you want. So it doesn't matter what line, what skin brand, what color it is, if it's tinted, non-tinted, sport, not sport, waterproof or not, just look at the percentage. You need a physical blocker, zinc or titanium, 8% or higher. And so then it comes to the consumer or the patient, what do you like better? The way it feels, the way it's packaged, the, the, the elegant formulation, can you wear it under your makeup? Can it withstand you know, hours of swimming? So that's where it becomes important for you to decide what's best for you. My job is just to educate you and tell you why you shouldn't get hung up on SPF. So then I also wanted to explain to you driving. So when you're driving in your car and any window, any window is going to allow the UVA rays to pass through. It actually blocks UVB light from coming through, which is great because it usually protects you against skin cancer. But if you're just driving down the 405 or driving on the freeway or wherever you're driving and you have this unfiltered UVA light coming in and say you're wearing an SPF of 100 that's not protecting you from that UV light, that's why you're still gonna get brown spots. You're still gonna get photo aging. I have patients come in with brown spots and melasma and they have Fraxel and we get rid of them and then they come back. The reason is because they're not protecting themselves from the brown spots coming back or the fine lines or wrinkles in the photo aging because you have this UVA light that's coming through and photo aging you even though your bottle says that it's SPF 100. That's why this is happening. That's why we like you to use physical blockers. And so if you look at the, in the United States, usually patients will have more of their photo aging on the left side of the face because you have the driver's side photo damage coming through versus in the UK and Australia, most patients will have more photo damage on their driver's side, which is the right side. And so it's really interesting. There's been evidence and data um, supporting these facts as well. So I feel, you know, as a dermatologist, it's my responsibility to protect you guys from this. Make sure you wear sunscreen on the back of your hands, on your arms, your neck, your chest, your face, when you're driving, and make sure that you have a zinc oxide or titanium dioxide that's 8% or higher. And then lastly, I just wanted to kind of go over different recommendations because I know you guys are gonna ask which ones I recommend. So I personally like a brand called Tizo 3. It's a mineral-based sunscreen and it's tinted. It's like a matte finish, it's not greasy at all. And basically after I'm done putting on my um, skin creams in the morning, you know, my retinol, my vitamin C, all that good stuff, Last, I put on my sunscreen, and I put that on in the morning, and I don't usually wear makeup, so I just have tinted sunscreen, and that acts as my makeup. It protects me from the sun, and it protects me from all the UV rays and the HEV light, which I'll explain in just a second what that is. And it's really light, it allows my skin to breathe, and then usually during the lunch hour, about 12 o'clock or one o'clock, I'll just reapply it. I keep it in my desk or my handbag or my car, and I just, I have sunscreen everywhere, for those of you who know me, in pockets and handbags everywhere. I put on my sunscreen, Screen, and then I just go on with that with, with the rest of my day. If you guys wear makeup and you have your sunscreen on under your makeup, you're not gonna wanna reapply your sunscreen and mess up your powder, your foundation, your primer, your highlighter, all that good stuff. So in that case, what I recommend is Color Science has a mineral-based sunscreen that's in a powder form. It's in a little tube and you basically twist it and it's on a brush and you can just dust your face off. So if you're at the beach with your kiddos or at soccer practice or if you're going to yoga after work or you're walking around during your lunch break, it's a good way to just reapply your sunscreen without ruining your makeup and it'll give you this matte beautiful finish as well. So I wanted to jump ahead and talk to you about HEV light. So just as we talked about the different UVA, UVB, we have HEV light that we have to take into consideration now that we didn't have to worry about as, as much decades ago because we weren't on our tablets, our phones, and in front of computers all day. So HEV stands for high energy visible light. And this comes from our cell phones, our tablets, our computer screens, our laptops, and it causes a premature aging. It causes a premature breakdown of collagen. So the physical blockers, the zinc oxide and titanium dioxide, also protect you from the HEV light. So if you're on your cell phone or on your tablet all day, I mean, who isn't? It's gonna protect you against that too. So if you're wearing your SPF 100 of some chemical blocker, not only are you getting the UVA photo damaging effects, but you're at your computer screen with all this high energy visible light hitting your skin, breaking down your collagen, and you're not protected. So I don't wanna freak anybody out. And it's never too late to start. So that's why you know it's important to wear a sunscreen that's a physical blocking, mineral-based sunscreen that's gonna block you from all the sources of radiation, including the HEV light. So 
I take it to the next level because I'm a dermatologist and a skin cancer surgeon, but I actually wear sunscreen at night. I'm not telling you guys that you have to do that, but not only do I use the sunscreen as my tinted sunscreen as my makeup, but also, you know, if I'm going to be, you know, going to bed at night and on my iPad, or if I wake up in the morning and the sunlight's coming through, I'm always protected. So you guys don't have to be that OCD, but I know people are going to ask, and yes, I wear sunscreen 24 hours, but it is important to know that you have to wear sunscreen even on cloudy days. And I'm not saying you have to wear it at night, but when it's cloudy or it's overcast or the skies are gray, there is still penetrating UVA, UVB light coming through that can damage the skin. So, you know, many people think, oh, it's raining today, I'm not gonna wear your sunscreen. Rain or shine, my beauties, you have to wear your sunscreen all the time, you know, even if it's raining, even if it's cloudy, and especially, of course, when it's sunny. The last thing I wanted to talk about is HelioCare. So if you guys follow me on Instagram, which if you don't, you should, because I post stories every day and I love to educate and share my knowledge with you. HelioCare is a fern-based, plant-based technology. It's an antioxidant supplement. So HelioCare has an inherent sunscreen in it of about SPF 8, anywhere from 8 to 10. So in and of itself, it's not enough to protect you from photo damage and skin cancer, but by taking this tablet once a day or even twice a day, it's an antioxidant, it's part of my supplement regimen that I take in the morning and at night. Sometimes I empty it out and put it in my smoothies in the morning. And it's this friendly technology that basically blocks you from UV radiation and binds free radicals, all the, does all this other good stuff too. But basically those times where you can't reapply or you forget to reapply or say you're at sea somewhere, you know, with your friends or you're in the water and you don't have time to reapply and you want that extra coverage, it's always a great thing to take. So HelioCare, a lot of my dermatology um, colleagues take it and it's an antioxidant um, with other health benefits as well. I think my neurologist colleagues use it for um, neurological benefits, health benefits. I think it prevents um, early onset Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's when you're older, different things like that. And I think um, my immunologist colleagues use it for immune um, health benefits as well. So it's an antioxidant and I take it twice a day in addition to putting on my sunscreen in the morning, reapplying in the afternoon, and that's my regimen. So in addition to Tizo, um, I think other great sunscreens, if you wanted to take a look online, Elta MD has a great um, high percentage mineral-based sunscreen. Um, Zeo Skin Health has, I believe it's a smart tone. One of them has a more uh, titanium dioxide as opposed to the um, chemical blockers in it that is my favorite personally. And then, um, you know, Skin Medic has a great sunscreen that is a smart sunscreen that also has like a Retin-A or Retinol in it that undoes damage that has already occurred in addition to protecting you from future damage and from sun exposure in the future. So. Um, another question that comes up is for kids. So kids aren't gonna need some elegant formulation that's gonna look well under their makeup. Um, you can lather them up with that chalky, greasy, um, zinc-based sunscreen that's gonna maybe not feel amazing, but it's gonna keep them covered when they're in and out of the pool all day, at the beach, at the ocean. Um, I use Blue Lizard on my kids. Um, I would never probably use it on myself. It's way too greasy, but for them, they do really well. There have been days where I can't reapply their sunscreen and they're in the pool all day and they've never knocked on wood have gotten a sunburn. So I really like zinc oxide. I also carry a little mineral-based um, Neutrogena stick and I just kind of stick their face. Their faces are white and they look like little um, mines, but they um, are protected from early photo damage. Because remember, photo damage that you have before the age of 18 will manifest in your 50s and 60s, not only as fine lines and wrinkles, which we can help by doing procedures like laser surfacing Fraxel using good skincare products, but it can cause skin cancer down the line. So 80% of the skin cancers that happen in the fifth and sixth decades of life are a result of photo da damage that happened before the age of 18. So protect your kiddos, protect your little ones, and um, protect yourself. It's never too late if you haven't used sunscreen or you're not being as diligent as you should. It's never too late to start. It will only help you. I hope you guys learned and took away some fun facts from this episode, and feel free to ask me any questions in the comment section. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you for watching, and protect yourself from the sun.